Meanwhile, we were, we were there waiting, and finally on the 16th of December, Battle of the Bulge started. We could hear boom, boom, boom out in the distance. And uh, wonder what's going on. So nobody knew anything until finally the, the word came down that the Germans were, were uh, trying to get back in. So they said, uh, now this was on the 17th of December, they told us to go down to any ordnance depot, and he gave us a list of two of them. Go down to these ordnance depots and take anything you want. I thought, oh, that sounds like a pretty good deal. We figured there'd be brand new tanks down there. So we got to the ordnance depots, and the ordnance people had just dropped their tools, like, you know, like I was working on that tank, and just dropped their, their tools and walked away and bugged out. They were afraid they were going to get captured, I guess. So we had to work for overnight, and we had to put one of those suckers together out of several others set, sitting there, you know. And I think one tank, uh, one tank must have had parts off of five or six different tanks, because they were all shot up pretty much. They had taken all the gun sights off of them. They had taken all the radios out, all the rammer staffs, everything that they could, somebody could use, they, somebody took it. So anyway, we worked on that. We got two tank, two Shermans, and one M36 uh, tank destroyer with a 90 millimeter gun. And uh, they they contacted us from higher headquarters. Said, "How soon can you get some tanks down there?" I said, "Well, we've only got three available." They said, "Well, take everything you can and go down to the Stumont Belgium railroad station." Well, the road, railroad station was about three miles out of town of the town of uh, Stumont. So we got down there, and there was a big sweeping curve that came around, and right down by the railroad station, the 30th Infantry Division were down in the, the uh, ditches next to the road. They were scared because here come the 1st SS Panzer Division, Adolf Hitler. Uh, if we come around the corner face-to-face, -face, the first tank face-to-face -face with, a, with a, a Panther, our man fired. No, no gun sight now. Fired and one of the rounds bounced off the concrete and into the, the bottom of the German tank, set it on fire and stopped them. So they were skewed there in the road. And the next, our man reloaded, tried to reload, and he was going to try and shoot the next tank. Well, the round got stuck. So he, again, hand signaled. Thank God they knew the hand signals because all the training, they had also had that. So he signaled the second tank to come up. So he fired and he, he bounced one off the uh, atlet yeah, and uh, it went in right below the atlet and it knocked the tank out. So then the third tank, the tank destroyer came around with a 90 millimeter gun on it and he f was able to get three rounds off before the German could even fire at him. And that shows how good our tankers, our gunners were. And I mean, I, they, I was proud of that bunch. They were damn good gunners, and every one of them. So anyway, uh, he, he knocked out the third tank, and so he had three tanks sitting there holding up, blocked up the road. So 1st SS Panzer turned around and retreated. Well, they didn't treat very far. They just found another road into the town. So we had to meet up. And by the way, when we got there, we had uh, the, two, the two tanks, the one tank destroyer. We also had an M7 like this one up here. Uh, we had an M8 armored car, uh, yeah, armored car. We had an M8 uh, Stuart tank. So it was just a conglomeration. And uh, one, of the, one of the guys, somebody along the way, and this is in our book, uh, the reason I'd like to bring it up. Uh, somebody asked this captain, uh, Red Berry was his name. He had C Company, and he was in charge of these tanks that went down to this. And uh, they asked him, what, what outfit is that? And he said, 740th Tank Battalion. He says, we're a bastard battalion, but we're all a bunch of good shooters. And he really was. I mean, he was very proud of that. So anyway, the 1st SS found another route into the town of Stumont. So at this time, they were in Stumont, and there, were, <clears throat> there was a what they called a Stumont Sanatorium. And sat up on a hill right in the middle of town. And to get there, you had to get up this pretty steep hill and the tanks couldn't get up there so what they did they waited till it got dark and they figured the German were probably either asleep or maybe just one guy on watch and maybe he'd be sleepy 
So they, they laid a, a corduroy road up the side of this hill so that they could get some traction. And when they got up there, they knocked out this, this uh, uh, panther that was sitting there and knocked out one of the verbal winds, you know, the air, any aircraft. Uh, I think it was a Mark IV with a, with a turret on it. And uh, so they knocked them out and come find out the, the building was loaded down with 30th Infantry Division troops that couldn't get out of the building because every time they tried to move, these tanks would shoot at them. So we liberated them and then happened to go down in the basement of this sanatorium and there was 92 people there, uh, young little kids, right up to old timers. So anyway, we got them loose and boy, they were very appreciative of that. And so we went from there. The next main thing that happened, why our colonel set up the, uh, the um, assault gun platoon which we, it was a conglomeration of M5 uh, pack howitzers and, and uh, oh, I think we had one or two 105s at that time. And they also found, saw a uh, 155 being bugging down the road to the, to the back, back country, you know, and uh, the colonel saw it and he sent his driver down. He said, you stop that guy and you tell him to get back up here and tell him I said he to get up there. So, he was a friend of mine, his driver, so he told me what happened. He said he went down, had to go like hell to catch him, and he called him and he, there was a young lieutenant in charge of him. And he says, you're to get, bring that gun back up in back of the chateau there at the Stumont. And he said, I'm bugging out of here. He said, no. He says, you got to take that thing back there. There's a one star back there that's saying that you got to come back. And the lieutenant said, oh, okay. So he turned around, he went like, <laughs> this lieutenant colonel saw him. He said, God damn it, uh, lieutenant, you're gonna, you're gonna fight and you're gonna stay in this battle until I tell you you can go home. And so he told him what to do with this 155. He lined it up, we had, we had uh, six assault guns and then this 155 sitting there. And he was, the colonel was up on the, like a veranda of this, of this uh, chateau in, in, outside Stumont. He's standing there with binoculars looking at, to the town of Leglise, where the 30th Division is having a heck of a time fighting the 1st uh, SS Panzer again. So he was giving them directions and they were, everybody was shooting. And today I don't understand why the people of Leglise don't hate the 740th Tank Battalion, but they love us when we go there. They, you'd think we were God Almighty sometimes. But they, we demolished the town and uh, ran, finally ran the Germans out of it. And uh, then from there on, oh yeah, right after that it was Christmas. And uh, on Christmas, uh, the 30th Division uh, Tank Battalion came back. They were 743rd Tank Battalion. So they came back and of course the 30th wanted their people back with them. So they, they told us, well, you're relieved of duty. Just, you can just report in the 1st Army and tell them so. So the Colonel went to the 1st Army and said 743rd came back and now we're looking for a home. They said, well, we got one for you. Said so the 82nd Airborne is, is up at Wormont. And if you go up there and report in there, and be with the 82nd. So he went up to the 82nd there at Werbelmont, and I don't know who it was he talked to, but he told the story about it. He said, when he went in there, uh, he told him who he was and what he had, and they said, well, you know, we haven't had much luck with tanks in this division. He says, every time we use them, they, they can't keep up with us. And this Colonel, being feisty as he was, he says, well, you know, it's funny. He says, because we were worried that maybe you guys wouldn't be able to keep up with us. So they said, oh, you, we're going to get along fine. Well, sure enough, we did. They loved us, and uh, we loved them, too. They were great. That, to me, that was the best division as a whole in, in, in Europe. And uh, we stayed with them through the rest of the bulge and then into the uh, Siegfried line. And we, you know, there were three thrusts into the, into the bulge, and we were on the north shoulder. And of course, Bastogne's down here. They were fighting a, a, almost a strictly uh, infantry army, British, uh, German army. And the third thrust was the one that went the furthest in, and they were strictly armored. And uh, so the second armored division was the one that stopped the one in the, the, the middle thrust. So anyway, we, we stopped them up the north shoulder and uh, went into the Siegfried line, and that was a hell of a battle there.